bright duty every student matters welcome to another lecture so we are doing the chapter 5 of class 9th alternative english which is the devoted friend we are reading the story of the very selfish miller and little hans who was so who was very innocent to understand the real intentions of this miller despite being through a very hard time in winters where he was starving he was feeling cold despite that the moment the spring season came the miller came to meet little hans he did not come empty handed and was still expectant to get roses you know the baskets filled with flowers when little hans mentioned to the miller that he had sold his wheel barrow because he needed money the miller told him that he would lend him he would give him his own wheel barrow and when the miller got to know that uh hans had a plank of wood that he could use to repair that wheelbarrow the miller said that that plank of wood he would be needing as he needs to repair his roof the roof of his barn so he told little hans to bring that plank of wood so that he can repair the roof of his barn hans said certainly and he ran into the shed and dragged the plank out so hans was happy to help the miller he ran inside the shed and he dragged dragging very with a lot of difficulty he pulled out that plank of wood it is not a very big plank said the miller looking at it and i am afraid that after i have mended my barn roof there won't be any left for you to mend the wheelbarrow with but of course that is not my fault and now as i have given you my wheelbarrow i am sure you would like to give me some flowers in return here is the basket and mind you fill it quite full so when the miller saw that plank of wood he said that that plank of wood was not that big and after he had mended mended repaired his roof he would not be left with any plank of wood that hans would be able to use to repair the wheelbarrow so miller said that, that is not my fault if there is no plank of wood that will be left that it is that isn't my fault and now he said since i am giving you my wheelbarrow do you mind filling my basket with flowers and also please fill it quite full just completely fill the entire basket with flowers quite full said little hans rather sorrowfully for it was really a very big basket and he knew that if he filled it he would have no flowers left for the market and he was very anxious to get his silver buttons back so little hans looked very sorrowed you know he was full of sorrow he looked very sad and he said full do you want me to uh, fill this basket to the full because that basket was very big and if he would fill that basket with flowers he would not be left with any flowers to sell in the market and he wanted to sell the flowers so that he would be able to get his silver buttons back well really answered the miller as i have given you my wheelbarrow i don't think that it is much to ask you for a few flowers i may be wrong but i should have thought that friendship true friendship was quite free from selfishness of any kind miller said yes i have given you my wheelbarrow and if in return of that wheelbarrow i am asking you for some flowers i don't think there is anything wrong in it besides he said that i believe that in true friendship there should not be any sort of selfishness my dear friend my best friend cried little hans you are welcome to all the flowers in my garden i would much sooner have your good opinion than my silver buttons any day and he ran and plucked all his pretty primroses and filled the miller's basket now this little hans was so silly 
he said to the miller that the entire garden and all the roses in the garden they all belong to you and rather than getting back my silver buttons what is more important for me is to have your good opinions to listen to these wonderful things you speak is more important than getting my silver buttons he ran he plucked all the prem roses and he filled the miller's basket Good bye little hand said the miller as he went up the hill with the plank on his shoulder and the big basket in his hand so the miller he started going back up the hill to his house he had that plank of wood on his shoulders and the basket full of uh, roses in his hand good bye said little hands as he began to dig away quite merrily He was so pleased about the wheelbarrow. Little Hans was also very pleased. He was very happy that he was going to get a wheelbarrow, and therefore he started div- digging away the ground very merrily. Very happily, he started digging the ground. The next day, he was nailing up some honeysuckle against the porch when he heard the miller's voice calling to him from the road. So he jumped off the ladder and ran down the garden and looked over the wall. So next day what what happened with the help of nails the uh, the little hands was trying to fix some honeysuckle uh, against the porch the wall of the garden. He heard the miller's voice and the moment he heard the miller's voice he very quickly came down the ladder and he went on to the wall to listen to what the miller had to say There was the miller with a large sack of flour on his back so the miller had come with a very big sack of flour on his back and what did he say to the little hands Dear little hands said the miller Would you mind carrying this sack of flour for me to the market? So he asked he asked little hands if he can carry this sack to the market on miller's behalf. Oh, I am so sorry said hands, but I am really busy today. I have got all my creepers to nail up and all my flowers to fl- water and all my grass to roll. So little hands said that I'm really sorry, but I am very happy. whatever creepers i have creepers we all know are the kinds of plants which keep on growing and you have to fix them at a height so that they would continue to grow in length so he had to fix his creepers he had to water his flowers and he had to roll and cut his grass well really said the miller I think that considering that I am going to give you my wheelbarrow it is rather unfriendly of you to refuse again the miller mentioned the wheelbarrow and he said that really don't forget that I am giving you my wheelbarrow and if you are refusing to help me that is very unfriendly that is very bad oh don't say that cried little hands I would not be unfriendly for the whole world and he ran in for his cap and trudged off with the big sack on his shoulders little hand said please don't say that i would never be unfriendly to anyone this is something that i am just not the kind of person and therefore he ran inside his house he got himself his cap and trudged off trudging off means he walked with a lot of difficulty with that sack of flour on his shoulders it was a very hot day and the road was terribly dusty and before hans had reached the sixth milestone he was so tired that he had to sit down and rest however he went on bravely and at last he reached the market after he had waited there some time he sold the sack of flour for a very good price and then he returned home at once for he was afraid that if he stopped too late he might meet some robbers on the way now obviously the day was very hot 
the road was very dusty and before hans would reach the milestone he was so tired that he had to sit and rest but he was very brave he had to complete this task he went to the market he sold that sack for a good amount of money and he thought that he should come back home quickly he should return back home early so that he is not robbed off on his way if it would get dark there was a danger of he getting robbed away on his way it has certainly been a hard day said little hans to himself as he was going to bed but i am glad i did not refuse the miller for he is my best friend and besides he is going to give me his wheelbarrow so little han said to himself that it was a very difficult day but he said i am happy that i did not say no to the miller because he is my best friend also he is going to give me my wheelbarrow early the next morning the miller came down to get the money for his sack of flour but little hans was so tired that he was still in bed So next morning little han uh, the miller came to little hans to take the money for that sack of flour that he has sold the previous day but hans was so tired that he was still in bed upon my word said the miller you are very lazy really considering that i am going to give you my wheelbarrow i think you might work harder Idleness is a great sin and I certainly don't like any of my friends to be either idle or sluggish. You must not mind my speaking quite plainly to you. Of course I should not dream of doing so if I were not your friend. But what is the good of friendship if one cannot say exactly what one means? Anybody can say charming things and try to please and to flatter. but a true friend always says unpleasant things and does not mind giving pain indeed if he is a really true friend he prefers it for he knows that he is doing good again the miller came he saw that little hans was still on his bed he said to little miller uh, to little hans that you are so lazy He said that don't forget I'm giving you my wheelbarrow and since I'm going to give you my wheelbarrow you have to be very hard working. He told little hands that being idle not doing any work is a great sin it is a big punishment and I don't like any of my friends to be either idle not to do anything or be sluggish be very slow and lazy. He said that don't mind I am saying all these hard and rude things to you but this according to me is the duty of a true friend He said anybody can speak good things about you can flatter you can please you can make you happy but it is the responsibility of a true friend to speak the things which are true which should be told to you even if they are very painful indeed he said that you know a true friend would always prefer to do such a thing would always want to do such a thing because he knows that he is doing it for your good i am very sorry said little hans rubbing his eyes and pulling off his night cap But I was so tired that I thought I would lie in bed for a little time and listen to the birds singing. Do you know that I always work better after hearing the birds sing? So little Hans said that I'm very sorry for being so lazy. He started rubbing his eyes. This is something we usually do when we wake up. He took off his night cap and he said that I was so tired that I thought of being in bed for some extra time. and listening to the birds he told the miller that he always <clears throat> worked better when he heard the birds sing well i am glad of that said the miller clapping little hands on the back 
for I want you to come up to the mill as soon as you are dressed and mend my barn roof for me. Again, he came with another favor from little Hans. He said, clapping hands on his back. Clapping hands, patting somebody on the back. Okay, very, in a very friendly manner at times you clap somebody on the back. So the miller said to little hands that that's very good that you work harder and you work better after listening to the birds sing because I want you to come to my barn and repair that roof which is broken. Poor little hands was very anxious to go and work in his garden for his flowers had not been watered for two days. But he did not like to refuse the miller as he was such a good friend to him. So little Hans did not want to go anywhere because he wanted to water his plants that had not been watered for two days. But he did not like to refuse to the miller because he knew he was a true friend. Do you think it would be unfriendly of me if I say I was busy? He inquired in a shy and timid voice, timid, fearful. Little Hans was afraid of saying no to the miller. So he asked in this fearful and shy voice that do you think if I say no to you, is it going to be unfriendly? Well, really, answered the miller, I do not think it is much to ask of you. Considering that I am going to give you my wheelbarrow, but of course if you refuse, I will go and do it myself. The miller said, yes, of course, this is very rude and unfriendly because I don't think I am asking for much. Besides, I am giving you my wheelbarrow. But if you say no, I will go back and I will repair it on my own. Oh, on no account, cried little Hans and he jumped out of bed and dressed himself and went up to the barn. So little Hans said, no, no, that is not required. He himself dressed up and went to the barn to work on it. He worked there all day till sunset and at sunset the miller came to see how much work was done. Have you mended the hole in the roof yet? A little hands, so he asked if he had repaired the row, uh, the hole. And Miller was in a very cheery voice. He was very cheerful, very happy when he asked the Miller, uh, when he asked little hands if he had repaired the roof or not. It is quite mended, answered little hands, coming down the ladder. Quite mended, it is almost repaired. He said that and he climbed down the ladder. Ah, said the miller, there is no work so delightful as the work done for others. So what did the miller say in return of it? He said, he said, this is so wonderful because it is very delightful. It makes one very happy when you do a work for others. So when you do something for others, you get very happy. It is certainly a great privilege to hear you talk answered little Hans, sitting down and wiping his forehead. A very great privilege, but I am afraid I shall have such beautiful ideas as you have. So Hans said that it is such a great privilege. I feel very honored. I feel very special that I am able to hear all these beautiful ideas and all these beautiful thoughts that you have in your mind. He wiped off the sweat that he had on his forehead and he said, I wish one day even I could have such beautiful ideas. Oh, they will come to you, said the miller, but you must take more pains. At present, you only have the practice of friendship. Some day you will have the theory also. Again, something very ironical. We people believe in practicing and not in theory. Again, speaking can be done by anyone, but to practice what you preach is more important. On the other hand, what did the miller say to Hans? That you are very good at practicing, you know, you are very good at acting uh, and being a good friend. But to speak, 
but to you know have a theory behind what you do this art you will get one day you will have to work very hard but you will get it some day do you really think i shall asked the little hands i have no doubt of it answered the miller but now that you have mended the roof you had better go home and rest for i want you to drive my sheep to the mountain tomorrow so even before little hans had gone back home he had a task for him for the next day he told him to go home and rest well because he wanted hans to take his sheep for grazing on the mountain poor little hans was afraid to say anything to this and early the next morning the miller brought his sheep round to the cottage and hans started off with them to the mountain it took him the whole day to get there and back and when he returned he was so tired that he went off to sleep in his chair and did not wake up till it was broad daylight so little hans obviously could not say no next morning early a uh, miller had come with his flock of sheep and hans was supposed to carry that flock of sheep onto the mountain for grazing and it took him the entire day uh, until he came back home and once he came back home he was so tired that he slept on the chair itself and did not wake up until the next day the sun shone what a delightful time i shall have in my garden he said and he went to work at once so he was very happy that today finally he will get the time to spend in his garden and work on his flowers so he went to work at once but somehow he was never able to look after his flowers at all for his friend the miller was always coming round and sending him off on long errands and getting him to help at the mill little hans was very much distressed at times as he was afraid his flowers would think he had forgotten them but he consoled himself by the reflection that the miller was his best friend besides he used to say he was going to give me his wheelbarrow and that is an act of pure generosity so he was never able to look after his flowers for his friend the miller he always kept on coming uh, you know to his garden sending him for long errands errands jobs things which took the entire day uh you know to be completed or he would send hands to his mill to work so little hans was very distressed he was very sad because he was not able to give any time to his flowers and he thought that the flowers would feel bad they would feel that hans had forgotten them but he consoled himself he made himself understand the fact that miller was his best friend this reflection this idea that miller was his best friend and on the top of it the miller was going to give him his wheelbarrow so he made himself understand and he continued to work for the miller so little hans worked away for the miller and the miller said all kinds of beautiful things about friendship which hans took down in his notebook and used to read over at night for he was a very good scholar so hans would continue to work for the miller miller would say all the beautiful things about friendship and hans would actually take a note of those wonderful things and at night before sleeping he would read those things because he was a good scholar he was good at reading he had an inclination he had an interest towards reading and learning now it happened that one evening little hans was sitting by his uh, fire side when a loud rap came at the door 
It was a very wild night and the wind was blowing and roaring round the house so terribly that at first he thought it was nearly the storm. But a second rap came and then a third, louder than any of the others. But what happened one evening? Little Hans was sitting inside his house by the fireside when he heard a loud rap at the door. A, a, you know, a sound of somebody knocking at the door was heard by him. It was a wild night. It was a very stormy. It was a very dangerous night. And at first he thought that it was only the sound of the storm that he heard on the door. He thought that it was the wind only that was blowing and was roaring. Roaring, it was making such sounds. But then there was a second rap that he heard. And then there was a third rap which was even louder than the first two. It is some poor traveller, said little Hans to himself and he ran to the door. He thought probably it was some traveller who needed shelter in this wild weather. So he went and opened the door. And who was there? It was none other than the miller who was standing with a lantern in one hand and a big stick in the other hand. Now what did he say to uh, Hans? He said, Dear little Hans, cried the miller, I am in great trouble. My little boy has fallen off a ladder and hurt himself and I am going for the doctor. But he lives so far away and it is such a bad night that it has just occurred to me that it would be much better if you went instead of me. You know I am going to give you my wheelbarrow and so it is only fair that you should do something for me in return. Again see the selfish attitude of the miller coming to the fore. He said to little hands that I am in great trouble. My son has fallen off the ladder and he has hurt himself and I am going to the doctor. But the doctor lives far away. Plus the weather is very bad and therefore I think that since I am giving you my wheelbarrow, you should also do something in return for me. So you will go to the doctor and call the doctor to my place. Certainly, cried little Hans, I take it quite as a compliment you are coming to me and I will start off at once. But you must lend me your lantern as the night is so dark that I am afraid I might fall into the ditch. Hans said that sure, I will surely do that. In fact, I take it as a compliment. I feel this is a very good thing that you came to me when you needed somebody. I will surely go to the doctor. But can you please give me your lantern because it is very dark and I am afraid that because I have no lantern, I might fall into a ditch. Ditch, a very deep trench, a very deep hole. Okay. So he said I might fall into a ditch. The miller said no. He said I am sorry. But it is my new lantern and it would be a very great loss to me if something happened to it. So this miller was not afraid that something might happen to Hans in that dark, but he was afraid that something might happen to his lantern. Well, never mind. I will do without it, cried little Hans. And he took down his great fur coat and his warm scarlet cap and tied a muffler round his throat and started off. Still, little Hans was such a fool, he said that, okay, no problem, I will manage on my own. He wore his coat, his cap, his muffler and he started to bring the doctor. What a dreadful storm it was. The night was so black that little Hans could hardly see. And the wind was so strong that he could, sc he could scarcely stand. However, he was very courageous and after he had been walking about three hours, he arrived at the doctor's house and knocked at the door. So it was a very dreadful storm. Dreadful, it was a very dangerous storm. And it was so dark that Hans could hardly see anything. 
and the wind was so strong that he could not even stand at a place you know it was very difficult for him to control his weight but little hans was courageous he was strong he was brave he went for 3 hours he was walking and then he arrived at the doctor's house and he knocked at the door who is here cried the doctor putting his head out of his bedroom window so the doctor looked out of the window and asked who he was little hans is what hans told the doctor what do you want little hans the miller's son has fallen from a ladder and has hurt himself and the miller wants you to come at once all right said the doctor and he ordered his horse and his big boots and his lantern and came downstairs and rode off in the direction of the miller's house little hans trudging behind him the doctor said okay he stood you know he sat on his horse he took his lantern he wore his coat and he started walking in the direction he started moving in the direction of the miller's house and poor little hans was again trudging behind him he was walking behind him with difficulty but the storm grew worse and worse and the rain fell in torrents and little hans could not see where he was going or keep up with the horse at last he lost his way and wandered off on the moor which was a very dangerous place and as it was full of deep holes and there poor little hans was drowned his body was found the next day by some goat herds floating in a great pool of water and was brought back by them to the cottage so the storm grew worse and worse and the rain rain fell in torrents torrents it was a very heavy rainfall okay hans could not see where he was going he could not move and keep his pace with the horse and finally what happened he lost his way he wandered off and where did he go he went towards the moor moor is a very dark uncultivated piece of land okay which is not taken care of by anyone now this moor was very dangerous because it had deep holes in it unfortunately little hans got drowned he fell into one of the deep holes and he drowned he could not save him the next day his body was discovered by the goat herds goat herds the the people who would take the goat for grazing so there were there were uh, you know a few people who were grazing their goats when they found little hans body floating on the river and they brought back his body to his cottage everybody went to little hans funeral as he was so popular and the miller was the chief mourner who is a mourner mourner is a person who expresses grief who expresses sorrow pain on the death of somebody so on the funeral of little hans everybody went because everybody loved him and the person who was there to pay his respect to little hans was none other than the miller as i was his best friend said the miller it is only fair that i should have the best place so he walked at the head of the procession in a long black coat and every now and then he wiped his eyes with a big pocket handkerchief here also he wanted to have a special place for himself he told the other people that since i was the best friend of little hans so i should get a special place in his funeral so he walked and he was standing at the front of that procession procession when you know the people take your coffin to the place it is to be buried so he went and stood at the beginning of the procession wearing a long black coat and wiping his tears with a handkerchief little hans is certainly a great loss to everyone said the blacksmith when the funeral was over 
and they were all seated comfortably in the inn drinking spiced wine and eating sweet cakes so after the funeral was over blacksmith was sitting with everybody in a hotel in an inn you know a small inn and was drinking wine and eating cakes and was saying that it is very sad that little hans is no more a great loss to me at any rate answered the miller why i had as good as given him my wheelbarrow and now i really don't know what to do with it it is very much in my way at home and it is such a bad repair that i could not get anything for it if i sold it i will certainly take care not to give away anything again one suffers from being generous just imagine what did he say to it he said that my loss was the biggest loss why because according to the miller he had given him his wheelbarrow you know although in words although he had not physically given him the wheelbarrow but he had promised to give him his wheelbarrow and he said that since i promised that i will give you my wheelbarrow i don't know what to do with that wheelbarrow now this wheelbarrow is in such a bad condition that i cannot sell it and get anything in return of it moreover he said that i have decided that i am not going to help anyone now he was taking it on to himself that that poor little hands who died it was his fault that he died before taking that wheelbarrow from him so he said it is uh, you know one always suffers for being generous he said the good people who are kind who have a big heart they always suffer for their goodness now the story opened with a water rat behaving and believing that a devoted friend is the utmost necessity that everyone needs in life the linnet begins to narrate a story about little hands and miller we read that little hands died because of the miller but the miller was such a you know selfish greedy person that according to him it was little hands mistake that he died without taking the wheelbarrow from him and now the miller did not know what was to be done with the wheelbarrow now we'll complete further this was the story the story of the miller and little hands has ended now let us see and uh, read the interaction between these water animals well said the water rat after a long pause well that is the end said the linnet but what became of the miller asked the water rat so as they were uh, you know conversing the linnet was through with his story the water rat was interested to know what happened with the miller thereafter oh i really don't know replied the linnet and i am sure that i don't care so the linnet said i don't know what happened with the water rat do and i also uh, you know what happened with the miller and i don't even care about it. It is quite evident then that you have no sympathy in your nature. The water rat said to the linnet that the way you are behaving <laughs> the way you are saying that you don't care about the miller it simply shows that you do not have any sympathy in your nature that you know you do not feel anything good about anyone else. I am afraid you don't see the moral of the story remarked the linnet so the linnet said that i'm really afraid you know i'm feeling bad that you have still not realized the moral of the story the what screamed the water rat so the water rat shouted at linnet and asked what are you talking about the linnet said the moral that the story had Do you mean to say that the story has a moral so just see how equally silly this water rat was he could not understand the reason why the linnet had narrated the story to him and the moral that the story held 
so he asked the linnet if the story actually had a moral certainly said the linnet so the linnet said yes of course the story had a moral well really said the water rat in a very angry manner i think you should have told me that before you began if you had done so i certainly would not have listened to your to you in fact i should have said poo like the crick like the critic however i can say it now so he shouted out poo at the top of his voice gave a whisk with his tail and went back into his hole the water rat said well really did the story actually have a moral so he got very angry with the linnet and said to the linnet that you should have told this to me earlier if you would have informed me earlier that the story had a moral i would not have listened to it in fact i would have said poo like the critic i told you we usually speak this word poo when we wish to disregard something when you know we do not want to listen to something when we don't wish to pay any respect to anything so the water rat said it's okay i can still say that i can still say poo and he shouted poo at the top of his voice he gave a whisk with his tail so he moved his tail in such a manner that showed he did not care and then he went inside his hole and how do you like the water rat asked the duck who came paddling up some minutes afterwards he has a great many good points but for my own part i have a mother's feelings and i can never look at a confirmed bachelor without the tears coming into my eyes i'm rather afraid that i have annoyed him answered the linnet the fact is that i told him a story with a moral ah that is always a very dangerous thing to do said the duck and i quite agree with her so after the water rat had gone into his hole the duck who came paddling towards the linnet paddling you know swimming using the fins and you know using the here the legs of the duck and you know coming towards the place where the linnet was so the duck came paddling towards the linnet and asked him how do you find the water rat do you like him and the duck told the linnet that he has a lot of good points he speaks well at times but because i am a mother because i have the feelings of a mother i feel bad for him because he is a bachelor and he is always going to remain one you know a man who is without a family can never understand the value of being with a family so the duck here simply said that though the water rat did talk sensible at times but she felt bad for him she at times had tears in her eyes for the water rat because she knew he was going to be a bachelor throughout the linnet said to the duck that i am afraid i feel bad that i have made him angry annoyed made angry so the linnet felt bad that he had made the water rat angry and why did the water rat get angry because he narrated a story with a moral so you see how ironical this is telling somebody a story with a moral actually hurt that person why because the person was so rigid here the person did not want to accept anything the person did not feel like accepting that he was wrong or that he should change himself for better and just because of this the water rat became annoyed and the duck also told the linnet that telling somebody a story with a moral is very dangerous because you don't know how the other person is going to take it the other person might actually get hurt and offended with this and the the linnet also agreed with the uh, duck so with this my dear students we come to the end of this story 
as we have read this story written by Oscar Wilde usually in fables the writers use animals to derive a moral and to teach the human beings here oscar wilde had done something exactly the other way round oscar wilde has used human beings derived a moral out of their behavior and was conveying to the animals So the story began with the duck trying to teach her kids how to stand on their head. The water rat then intervened by saying that the kids these days were very disobedient. The duck asked him further about his opinions on the same and water rat said that he did not have a family. He did not wish to get married because according to him it is only friendship that mattered the most according to him if you have a devoted friend you have everything in life the linnet who was swinging on the branch of a tree nearby he joined their conversation and started narrating to the water rat and the duck a story this story titled the devoted friend was about little hans and miller Little Hans had a small garden and this garden was the most beautiful in the countryside. Miller on the other hand had mill where he made flour of uh, you know corn. Then he had woolly sheep, he also uh, you know. So there were a lot of things that the miller would do and obviously he had a lot of money with himself. The miller would come to meet little Hans every day. would give him great preachings would say wonderful things about friendship and would always leave uh, with a basket full of flowers the little hands he never noticed that the miller was very selfish and that he was simply speaking and talking not giving anything to him but taking along a lot of flowers now the time changed the season changed it was the winter season and because it was the winter season the you know there was no flower that could blossom in the garden of little hands and therefore he went through a very difficult time he was feeling cold he did not have fire to burn he did not have food to eat and therefore he sold his wheelbarrow his silver buttons his silver chain his pipe so that he could get something for himself to eat where on one hand little hans suffered such a great deal his so called best friend was not in the least worried about the about little hans and he throughout the winters would simply keep on telling his wife that the reason he did not visit little hans in winters was because that would make him feel sad and when somebody is in a problem the miller believed that the person should be left alone rather than being bothered by the visitors the miller's little son suggested that they should bring in little hands to their home over the winter so that he can have a better stay but the miller scolded his son by calling him silly and saying that if little hands will come over to their place and will look at the kind of house they have the warm fire the good food the casket of wine then he will get envious he will get jealous and he did not want jealousy to come in friendship after the winter season got over and the spring season began the miller decided he was going to visit little hans again before going his wife told him to take the basket a big basket which should be filled with flowers on his return the miller went and met little hans little hans was very happy to see his friend and he told him how difficult and how uh, you know hard it was for him to survive in the winters the moment little hans mentioned about the fact that he had sold his wheelbarrow miller told him that he had a wheelbarrow which was not in a very good condition as one side of the wheelbarrow was totally dysfunctional but he is going to give that wheelbarrow to little hans Little Hans got very happy that he was going to get a wheelbarrow. 
He suggested to Miller that he had a plank of wood, a piece of wood in his shed, which he can use to repair the wheelbarrow. The moment Miller heard about that plank of wood, little Hans had, he said that he would need that plank of wood to repair his roof. The little Hans obviously could not say no to it and he gave that plank of wood to Miller. Then the miller gave him his big basket and asked him to fill that basket with flowers. Little Hans was obviously not willing to do that because he wanted to sell these flowers to the market and get his silver buttons back. But obviously he could not say no to his friend. Why? Because the miller kept on reminding him again and again that he was going to give him his wheelbarrow. And since he was going to give him his wheelbarrow, this was a favor that he expected in return. So, little Hans did as he was asked. Next day, the miller again came with a sack of flour and told little Hans to go to the market to sell it. It was a very difficult journey with that heavy sack on his shoulders. But little Hans did that and came back late in the evening. He slept and he slept so peacefully that until the next day, until it was daybreak, he did not wake up. He was woken up by the little miller who came with another task for him. And what was this task? To repair the roof of his barn for which he needed that plank of wood. Little Hans wanted to refuse because it had been two days since he had not watered his plants, he had not taken care of his plants, but again he could not say no. Why? Because the miller told him that he was going to give him his wheelbarrow. Now, this continued for a few more days and our little Hans just could not do his work in the garden because the miller was coming to him for one task or the other. One night, the miller came to his door. It was a very bad, very stormy night. And he told little Hans to go to the doctor and call him because the miller's son had fallen off the ladder and hurt himself. It was dark and stormy. Little Hans set out to call the doctor without even a lantern in his hand. He went to the doctor, he called the doctor, the doctor started coming back to the miller's home. The doctor was on his horse but little Hans was following him on foot. The weather being so bad, he wandered off and he got drowned in a deep trench. So there was a big hole filled with water, he fell into it and he died. Next day, a few people who would get their goats for grazing, they found his body and that body was brought back to his home, to his cottage. Miller was the chief mourner. He expressed his grief at the death of his friend. But on the top of it, his major grief was the fact that little Hans did not take his wheelbarrow before dying. And now that wheelbarrow was still with Miller and he did not know what he could do with that wheelbarrow because it was in a very bad condition and selling it would not fetch him any money in return. This story was narrated by the Linnet to Water Rat because he wanted him to understand what exactly is a devoted friend and what are the rules of a devoted friend. But the rat got angry because the linnet narrated to him a story with a moral. And according to the duck, it is dangerous to tell anybody a story with a moral because the people don't believe in you, the people don't trust you and the people don't understand the feelings with which the story is narrated.